some of them were listening and were approving and some weren't and some were entering into the dialogue. And then this little skinny chicken neck guy who was probably 20 years older than he looked comes in and says, you think Obamacare is screwing you now? <laughs> Wait until you see what happens in the future. And it was wow. Scary. Kind of scary. <laughs> I know. I mean, they are really planning to drop the hammer on this country. They brag about it. They're very arrogant about it. And it's just, it's just amazing. The good news is people are waking up, but that's the bad news because it's making them move quicker. They're not going to give up. So it's like two freight trains coming at each other down the same track. Thank you, Otter. Wild in Wisconsin. You're on the air. Go ahead. And Mr. Jones, before I get to my first point, I'm curious to know how it feels for you when you hit that pedal to the metal in that Hellcat. Well, I don't like to do it a lot because I have three children. Uh, the salesman sold me on it when I was just there uh, training in an old uh, Jeep. And because you could get uh, the, the equivalent of a top Ferrari uh, for one twentieth or one thirtieth the price, uh, it just seemed like pure Americana. I had to have it. And I've driven other people that I know who have 600 horsepower Porsches. Uh, my cousin likes to take his friend's really fast car out to the track. I haven't done that because I don't want to endanger myself. But it is fun to be able to be going 55 on a lonely stretch of highway because I don't like to take off fast from a stop because that can be dangerous. And to hit the accelerator and you're going 150 in seconds. I mean, the car will slam you back in your seat. And that's just in regular drive. If you put it in a lower gear and hit it, it is, it's just, I, it, it's, it's, it's faster than most NASCARs because uh, they have to dial those back now as people get killed in them. And it's just an example of the rest of the world's, I got it because of the little things like easy cars or car to go that are designed not to even really save gas, but to just put you in a tin can and lower our standard of living uh, as kind of a middle finger to Al Gore and the rest of them as just a piece of Americana. Uh, and uh, it's kind of like why I have 250 caliber rifles, you know. Plus, they w they've gone way up in value, so they're a good investment. If I ever have to, I'll sell them to keep the, the radio slash network going. Uh, so the Hellcat's more of an investment because uh, it, it basically doubled in value right after I bought it. You can buy them for like $63,000. I could I had offers for to buy it a week after I bought it for 120. They wanted to buy it back because they have to like legally sell it um, for the price listed by Dodge or they won't get any more. Well, all of Austin only got like three. I hardly ever see them. Uh, and so uh, now they're coming out with more, and they're going to be a lot more. Uh, but it's just a piece of Americana. I kind of treated myself. Uh, but I think I might actually sell it because God laid it on my heart that it's not really prudent for somebody like me that's got so much riding on what I'm doing, people counting on me uh, to uh, put myself in something like that. But I tell you, what I really love about it, <laughs> I'm going to this whole plug about that car. I love it like a woman. The problem is, uh, is that it's it's absolutely me. It doesn't look like anything, and it's got you know big back seat. Put the kids in there. I don't like super fancy standout stuff. Like I love Ferraris, but I if I even had the money, I wouldn't spend it on that. But it's just too flashy. Uh, so the understated stealth nature of it. And the fact that it's 780 horsepower, because they're supposed to be 707. The truth is they tested the drivetrain, and they wanted to get under some government standards. It's really 780-something horsepower, according to Car and Driver and others. So you're sitting in a 780-horsepower car. Uh, it's just sexy. <laughs> and it's even sexier because it's more than meets the eye. And I really like that. I really like that it isn't standing out. People, I've been on the highway. One time I was on 37. Um didn't have the kids with me, and I was uh, coming back from the beach. Kids were with my parents uh, right when I got it. It had about 1,000 miles on it. So I was one of the first to get them because I put the order in you know, like a year before they came out because the salesman told me about it, so I waited. And this guy pulls up one of these Fast and Furious littler cars, souped-up Toyotas or whatever, wanted to race me. And I shouldn't have done it, but it was ridiculous. And then I'd let him get back up to me, and then I'd wow, just like fly down the road. So, all right, now I'm not in a bad mood anymore. You just did it. Wild, stay there. I'm going to come back to you. I've gone from being depressed and upset and angry uh, to like feeling like I need to fire up a cigarette. <laughs> you know what you do when you fire a cigarette up in the old movies, you know? It's kind of like that feeling. Satisfied. 
I just thank God for all his great creations. We're back live, folks. Thank you for joining us. I'm Alex Jones, your host. Wild, you got me off on an Americana Hellcat uh, love letter. So I'm going to shift gears out of that, pun intended. Um, what is the main issue you called in about? No problem. Uh, just lastly, you deserve it. I think you deserve that Hellcat. Uh, God gave it. Okay, so audience uh, listening, Alex is beyond right. It's beyond the Manhattan Project times a thousand. We are less than 10% down the rabbit hole. But it is not bad or good. It is exactly what we deserve globally. Absolutely. And it, I guess it's just judgment. We've all gotten corrupt. We've gotten decadent, myself included. Nobody's perfect. We're, our government is allowing the secret sale of body parts and trying to deny it of little babies. They're keeping them alive. They're harvesting them. I mean, the sky's the limit. Imagine what we don't know that's going on. It is about population reduction. It is about dehumanization. It's about the decision by the culture that we're crap collectively and we're going to abort humanity. And that's the sick crap. feeling we have is the bottom has fallen out. And I'm not trying to be negative. We should be honest about where we are so we can do something about it. I appreciate uh, I you. They... Sorry, go ahead. Okay, I don't think they look at us like crap, unfortunately. Uh, I think they look at us lesser than. Um, but, you know, it's kind of, I, I don't, I'm not saying anything by this. I had a strong father, but it's kind of like how, in certain ways, the father controls the son. You know, you look at the control. You know, God controls man, father controls the son. Yeah, there's free will, but there's still the control. We are being fathered and trained by our government father. The problem is here is that that father, the government father, is not in control of himself or herself or the group as a large. It's, it's intoxicated by his own actions and ego and bound by his mind. You're absolutely right, brother. You hit the nail directly on the head. Appreciate your call. Cash in Missouri, thanks for holding her on the air worldwide. I want to ask you a favor, Alex, but first I'd like to say that my wife and I have been listening to you for years, and we actually refer to InfoWars as the real stream media. Um, we've, but we've never heard more financial experts say that the physical cliff is getting closer and closer and closer. So with our limited physical assets and our income, we're stepping up our prepping mainly. We're stocking up on food and water, silver coins, uh, firewood and ammo, and a lot of your health products. Um, and now we're even building a chicken coop. But last night, we were watching several YouTube videos of hundreds and hundreds of tanks on railroad cars and mile-long convoys of armored vehicles in over a dozen different states across America today. And I just wonder how many of these soldiers practicing martial law drills will follow the orders to confiscate our guns, mow down innocent Americans that they have been brainwashed to believe that, that we the people are the enemies of America simply for standing up for our God-given rights. But my wife and I believe that InfoWars has become the largest um, military, um, or has the largest uh, audience of military active duty soldiers as listeners. And so InfoWars has the, the bully pulpit, or, or maybe better said, the anti-bully pulpit. So here's, here's my, my request, is, is please take at least one day a week to dedicate the entire show, or, or at least the fourth hour, now that you have that, to look these soldiers in the eye, grab their ear, and help them see past that compartmentalization and help them connect the dots. We may have the guns behind every blade of grass in this country, but the military guns are bigger than ours. And we've been chopping off the tail of this snake. But if we had their support and their big guns and their billions of rounds of ammo, we could blow the head off of the snake and the top of the pyramid where these Satanist bankers' snakes hide. We believe that the good military outnumbers the bad military members. So, well, that's you definitely have, true. And, and, and look, but the globalist strategy is, is, is built around two things. We're going to go to break. I'm going to come back and try to detail what you've said historically and why it's not one of the main options we want to go with, at least until everybody's educated. We've got to get more people educated before you would even look at anything like that. But clearly the crimes of the people that have taken over – well justify removing the people at the top of the government. The problem is they're set up for that.
and set up to stop that and set up to demonize that. So there's alternatives. See, you look at how their attack defense profiles set up, then you find their weaknesses. And it's twofold. And we'll break it down when we come back. God bless you, sir. We appreciate you, Cash. We'll be back. Stay with us. I'll tell you this, we've been working on a lot of Jade Helm stuff. We've been working on a lot of new government documents that have been coming out, and it's all just sensational. It's, it's, it's basically all the same. It's like this article from last year, uh, Homeland Security Exercise Targets Free Americans Against Socialist Tyranny. And that links through to FEMA Capstone 2014 National Exercise. And it just says in the document, that uh, we're preparing to basically take on the Tea Party and uh, the number one enemies of the government. And it's just completely treasonous. It's what you'd think you'd see in a science fiction movie. Like, they find the document. The government's planning to go after real Americans who stand for the Bill of Rights and Constitution. It's a martial law plan. Oh, my gosh, get this information to the president. He'll stop the group in Congress. But instead, it's just, ah, it's out in the open. Yeah, the armored vehicles are for the constitutionalists. And it's just like, wow. Because we know they're the takeover. We know they're the criminals. And so it just becomes open and shut. It's just it's completely cut and dry. And now they're pushing groups to say kill the police to start a civil war. I mean, they're just so villainous. It's gotten to the point where I almost can't even talk about it anymore. In fact, I'm not doing this for theatrics. I'm not doing this to... Uh, I love doing this radio show. And uh, I, I just really enjoy it. And I love fighting tyranny. I love covering issues. But <sighs> some days, it doesn't happen very often, I get in here and I look at the girls from the Gardasil shot having convulsions. <sighs> and, and at a certain point, I can't be on air. In fact, I just told them during the break, go get Rob Dew. He does a great job. He can interview this lawyer about the police and everything that's happening in studio. Um, and then they can do a whole fourth hour. If they don't, they don't have to do it today. I just can't be here. Uh, and, and you know what? I think it's really just gotten to that point where the evil is so over the top. I just need to go pray for a few hours, uh, and I just need to uh, really um, get my head screwed on straight because uh, every indicator is something big is about to happen, and it's like the last caller said, You know, wow, you really are. This is the tip of the spear. And, and, and then there's that realization of I don't feel worthy to be sitting here talking to tens of millions of people. And I don't know what the lever is we pull or what we do to try to stop these people. It, it's like watching a giant evil spider with big stinking fangs creeping towards little babies in their cribs. And it's already eaten a whole bunch of them. There's these little suck dry skeletons with the skin sucked onto the face and the eyes sucked in and the spider's singing this evil happy song and then it goes over to the next baby and sucks it dry and the next one and and, and I mean spiritually that's what it's like watching it and then just covering this and sitting here I, I just I get to the point where I can't look at it anymore I feel like I should go out in the desert for you know six months or something or in the mountains and just get my head straight and what to do about these people, I just can't handle it anymore. I mean, God, they're so bad, and they've gotten us in a trance where we're just accepting what they do by increment to now all this incredibly macabre stuff is out, brain-damaged children everywhere, body parts of dead babies being sold, open borders, total insanity, world government, GMO killing the rats they feed it to, fluoride in the water, all these giggling, simpering trendies, banning free speech. But there's good news taking place. You know, I'm going to go to some phone calls. I got my video list here. I saw this a few days ago, but it's back in the news today. Where Missouri teenagers protest a transgender student use of the girls' bathroom. And it's just some, it's some guy that everybody knows in the school. And now he's in the girls' bathroom. And the argument is, oh, be nice of what he thinks he is. But the truth is, with all the issues in the world, this is just an assault to confuse everybody and and create, you know, all these problems, like making taxpayers pay for sex changes. It's just all part of the weird fog that's injected. And I see students protesting having to wear biometric 